Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're going to talk about reading books in English. And、um, I started reading books in English when I turned 14, and my level of English was, I think, intermediate back then. So I'm going to go through tips that I use to improve my English by reading books and articles and other kinds of things. And、uh, yeah, by the way, experimenting with setups、uh, because my studio, my home studio, is actually a guest bedroom, and we have people come in. And、um, I decided, why not? Film in my office. By the way, thank you guys. I have these buttons in the back.、Uh, one of them is for this channel. So thank you so much for watching this channel. Thank you so much for sharing these videos and hitting the like button if you think that the information on this channel is useful. So let's chat about reading in English. First of all, the goal with reading in a foreign language is to complete. And finish whatever you're reading. It is not to stop in the middle of the book to write things down. It is not to write down as many new words as possible. No. Okay, maybe two goals. Goal number one is for you to enjoy what you're doing, reading, and second to finish reading whatever you're reading. So when you start, I suggest you start with something smaller.、Uh, so when I was 14, the world was different back then.、Uh, I'm 31 years old now, and back then. There was no like, but there was internet, but I wasn't using it. I didn't have access to this internet thing all the time. I only had it on my computer, and I paid for every megabyte that I used. So it wasn't something I would do every day. But I went to the UK for the first time back then, and I realized, oh my god, I like fashion magazines. I like all of those L girl, <laughs> whatever magazines, and I try to buy as many as I could. Now you have this luxury of going online and just reading all the articles in L US or in whatever magazine that you're enjoying. So I got all of those magazines, and I realized even with intermediate. It was actually easy, kind of easy for me to understand what's going on because they had a lot of pictures, they had a very basic vocabulary, but I was learning a lot as well. I was learning a lot, like a purse, like those words that they would use to describe different clothing items that I haven't heard of before. So when you start, try to choose a topic that interests you the most. I would also suggest subscribing to people on Instagram who write posts. I write posts from time to time. I do stories about my life, but I also Try to write things on the screen on top of my story. So subscribe to Lingua Marina. This could be another like potential source of information. But there are also a lot of other websites where you can read articles. I think articles like news articles or just articles about whatever、um, is a great place to start. And when you read them, don't stop at every single word. If you see a word come up in every passage, or you've seen it come up for the fifth or sixth time, then look it up. But if you just see a word and you don't know its meaning, skip it. Whatever. There will be so many words in your life that you don't understand, and stopping to check everything out just takes away the pleasure of reading. I would only stop and check the meaning of a word in a situation when you read something, and then a few pages later, you like, I don't understand. Like that word, what was it? Like a positive meaning or a negative meaning? And if that one word affects The upcoming plot, then yes, check it out. And if you see the word for six or seven or eight times, and you're like, "Come on, I have to know its meaning because it's just everywhere," then check it out and write it down. I wanted to show you my reading template, but I also realized we might just pop it up on the screen. So basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain what we see right here. So this is、uh, my Notion reading template, and I'm gonna share it with you. This is just a great way to first structure everything that you're reading, and second of all, it's a great tool to write down the new words that you encounter. And I would also recommend some books just in case you're looking for something to read. So first of all, this is one of my favorite books, *The Subtle Art of Not Giving an A F U C K*. I'm not gonna pronounce this word for the purpose of not getting demonetized. So you have the name of the book, you have genre,、uh, it's nonfiction self-help. You have the author, Mark Manson. Then you have a date when you finish the book.、Uh, then you have like a rating.、Uh, I put in life changing five star, four star, and you can go all the way down. Level of English here, I would say it's actually upper intermediate because if you're upper intermediate, you would be able to understand this book、uh, completely. And、uh, key takeaways, maybe like th- this book has been life changing for me. And uh, uh, there are so many things I've learned. Like when something bad happens, think about. 
what you're gonna do in the worst worst case scenario and uh, then you know just just wait for things to happen by themselves uh, instead of worrying like there are so many useful tips that I took from this book and you can put them in the key takeaway section and then there's link to download a link to share maybe if people ask you for that book but basically you can go through every single book using this template and also if somebody tells you read this book or read that book you just put them in the list and you don't lose them because otherwise we get so many recommendations on the books to read I'm gonna recommend a couple more books but before we go into recommending books um, I would highly suggest that you check out notion notion is uh, this tool that lets you organize everything and I was just demonstrating my uh, reading template and I think Notion is the stool that all of the organizing organization nerds have been looking for I'm just so glad I discovered it I'm taking this course with other creators and a lot of people were sharing how they use notion I was like why haven't I used it before and I started using it a few weeks ago and it's just life-changing like I have this reading template I have my weekly planner here I can quickly show you this is my weekly planner uh, with every single day and uh, I create schedules so there are so many things that you can do with uh, with with Notion and it's also very useful for note taking, it's very useful for education, uh, for learning English, for writing down new words. What I really like about it is that you can actually share it with other people. Like for example, if you're learning English with a friend and you're reading a book together, you can always share your reading template with them and they would also fill in stuff, like they will fill in words that they found useful, they will fill in their key takeaways. And if you can find the study buddy from another country, this is just another way for you to practice your English. So check out Notion, one of the best tools out there. I'm so, so glad I discovered it. And I'm really happy that they're sponsoring this video because I just want you to know about this tool. I hope you start using it and I hope you will be able to organize your life. You organize your studying process and it will really help you structure everything that you learn on a daily basis in terms of English and in terms of other things. Three more book recommendations. Essentialism by Greg McCune, one of my favorite books as well. Upper intermediate slash intermediate level. One key takeaway, I don't want to be a spoiler uh, a person who spoils everything and you know everything before reading a book having a workplace at home can be a corner just a desk that's always in order takes away the hassle of starting something so if you have this a uh, mini office at home and it's always ready for you to start learning English then it's gonna be a lot easier for you to start and like starting that's the most difficult thing for our brain, like switching from relaxation mode to work mode. But once you switch, once you get into it, uh, the process uh, gets a lot faster. So this is what he teaches in this book. Bed Blood is another great book. Uh, this is just a story for you to read because uh, um, Silicon Valley is this amazing place where a lot of ideas come into life by people funding them but a lot of people take advantage of it and they just come up with stuff and raise money uh, for stuff that's not working. And Bed Blood is a story about that. It's a real story. And uh, Elizabeth Holmes, a person who who's the main character there, she's a real person and um, she was our neighbor in San Francisco. She lived in a neighbor neighborhood building. And another book that I really liked, Willpower Doesn't Work, again, about creating environment that would inspire you to work. All of those books are listed in my Notion reading template, so please check it out, download the books, and uh, use the template to fill in things yourself. Another tip, if you're just starting out with reading books in English, is to start with a couple of books that you've actually read in your own language, like those bestsellers, you know, there are two benefits to it. First of all, you would refresh your memory. And second, the concepts will be familiar to you. So you won't be like confused uh, about whatever is going on in the book because you will still remember, even if you forgot completely the, the contents of the book, you will still remember like, oh my God, yes, they talked about it. Oh, and this is how it is explained in English. Also a suggestion here, a lot of people switch to audiobooks these days and I do because <laughs> having a baby and having so many things uh, having an audiobook I just put in my headphones and I, I walk with a stroller very convenient Emily sleeping I'm listening to a book 
But audiobooks are a lot harder in terms of learning new words because you will have to stop the recording and like, oh my God, what was that word? If you have time and you want to work on both, I would suggest having an audiobook and having a hard copy or at least like a Kindle version of whatever you're using for reading because this way you will be able to switch back and forth and some apps would allow you to do that and uh, practice both listening and reading. Another quick tip if you're like, okay, Marina, I tried reading books but no, this is too complicated. Uh, there are a couple of websites that I would recommend. First is breakingnewsenglish.com. Second is wrongchan.com, dreamreader.net. Those are websites that take news and articles and actually adapt them for English language learners. So you would be able to find articles based on your level and you would be able to not only read the articles, but some of the websites have exercises. Some of the websites have audio versions. So it's not just like reading an article. It is actually a learning experience. And my main tip here, like if, if you would ask me like Marina, what would be my key takeaway from this video? I would say only read things that interest you because otherwise if there is no interest, if you're forcing yourself to read a book, because it's already hard, it's already hard to read in a foreign language with so many unknown words. And if you don't enjoy the content, you will just give up. And this is the last thing I want you to do. So if you're interested in, I don't know, YouTube, uh, find a book about YouTube. If you're interested about getting education in the United States, get my book about uh, how I got a full rate scholarship. It's in English. If you're interested in fashion, go and order L magazine from the US. I'm pretty sure these days you can find it anywhere in my city, uh, St. Petersburg. We have like a whole store that sells a lot of magazines and, and books in English. And I was their loyal customer for many, many years. I read Jacqueline Wilson's books. Those were my favorites. And I was like 14, 15, 16. I read all of her books and my library was growing bigger and bigger at home. And again, if you don't have access to hardcover books, you can always download an app. You can always look online uh, and uh, print things out or read them on your device. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Please make sure to check out all the links below. Check out Notion, check out my Notion template. Start reading in English, start improving because you will be just amazed how many things you learn by reading both about the language and about life. Thank you so much. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, hit the red button, subscribe.